And we are live. Welcome to Claret Big Blue, probably the only podcast on the interwebs dedicated to the New York Giants and West Ham United. That's right, football and football, balls for everyone's taste. I am Mike Fish, and as always, I am joined by Mr. Alex Middleton. Alex, how are you doing, buddy? What's going on, man? I would like our teams to win again on the same weekend. Like, we had a nice little run there in the beginning, and that was fun. But it's just like, it's not as fun to do these podcasts when they both didn't win. Like, I'm like, fuck yeah, we get to talk about wins with Mike? Let's do it. It's Tuesday? Okay. And now it's just like, well, I mean, we get to talk about a win. But, but it you know, like forever with, ago. It does. It really does. It just like, let's just look at it as a minor setback for a major comeback or whatever the saying is. I mean, no spoiler alerts. If you if you're relying on this podcast for your Giants news and you've like, I don't know what I don't want to know the result because I want to wait until Mike and Alex talk about it. We uh, are. Do you think there's anybody like that? <laughs> I doubt it. But you never know. There might be one. Um, but yeah, we are <laughs> lulling the rest of the NFC East into a false sense of security. And then we're going to sneak yeah, right back right in. Right where we want them. At the Just end. like the beginning of the season. But, um, uh, before but, we yeah, jump into that, I, though. All right. I'm just going to quickly ask, you know, because I only see you once a week. What have you, you been up to? Any sign of um, I've been kind of like, I've just been busy, man. Uh, this is, not to brag, but we have the last two weeks of the year off at my job. Like, this is our final week of work. And then we're going to cash in on the rest of the vacation. But uh, so we got a lot of that stuff going on. And like when you take off, I'm sure it's with everybody, but like, especially with like in, in my job, like we have to record everything that's going to be on like while we're off. So mm. it's like a lot of like I'm putting in two weeks of work kind of in a week just to have two weeks off. But um, radio I've been doing that. And then not a person, I'm mean, a guy that happens to work on the radio. <laughs> but um, then I have a uh, Past the Gravy podcast, my other podcasts, uh, Christmas Spooktacular going down this weekend. And so I've been doing a lot of preparation from that, a lot of video editing, a lot of promotion, a lot of just uh, double checking with my, uh, my engineer guy, being like, hey, we have these cords we need, right? Okay, cool. We have, I have this microphone. Do we still need these mic? Like, just double checking and triple checking that like everything is is ready to go because I always have this like nervous anxiety before I do an event or anything like that. Oh, I like, imagine everything that could go wrong is going to go absolutely terribly wrong, and like usually it, it doesn't. But just like like I don't I don't dream really. I don't ever remember my dreams, but the ones that I do remember are just like terrifying. Like I'm late to work, something like is preventing me from doing my job, and like just terror dreams really are like the only dreams that I have. But I've been really just uh, you know getting. Like I'm going to have two weeks off, but I'm also doing like this whole uh, podcast thing, this live podcast one, the first one of the year, but uh, just been kind of working on that stuff. What about you, man? Uh, I've not been as busy. <laughs> I haven't been setting up anything, but I'll tell you what fun, fun little story. I, for some reason, I got told I had to clean the bathroom on Sunday, right? So that was my yeah. job. But have you ever, because normally whenever I get asked to clean anything, I'm the kind of person that's like, okay, what's the least I can do to make this look like on the it's outside, being cleaned? Yeah. Amazing. Moving your food around on your plate, basically, as a kid is what you got. Yeah. That's the equivalent I normally do. But for, I don't know if you've ever had this feeling, but so Sunday I just cleaned the bathroom and at the end of it, I just had this overwhelming feeling of, you know, I, I fucking crushed this. Like, I crushed this bathroom cleaning. And so all of a sudden I was like, I need more things to clean. And I just went around the house <laughs> and cleaned everything. I spent two and a half hours reorganizing our pantry. I just found out that we've got enough food to last us like six months in there. But I just like Dude, the good. whole day. And then that's when I rewarded myself with uh, a trip to the liquor store. And I got, and I got my yinglings. 24 Dude, for I'm 14 dollars and i like the new like those are like the throwback cans you got there too i like that we don't get yingling in texas i mean i'm a southern star guy as you know obviously shout out southern star uh um, but but um yeah i'm a, i'm a brand man but yingling every time i'm out of texas i always got to get the am i go with the uh, the og like amber 
that they got little green bottles. Mm. But um, I don't know if you know this. Everybody that's a big Yingling person will tell you this. This is a fun fact if you want to beat them to the punch. Um, Yingling is the oldest brewery in the country. I don't know that. I don't know if you can see that YouTube world, well, just, but they have if, that on the if can. You, if you ever drink a Yingling with somebody that like they bring it, like, you know, it's the oldest beer in the, in the country. Like that, that's their first thing they want to tell you. It's like a CrossFitter, a vegan or somebody like in Texas A&M. If you go to Texas A&M here, like that's like the first thing that you did. Like you got like, Hey Mike, what's going on, Mike? I'm Alex. I went to Texas A&M. Gig him. Like, like that's, and I'm not knocking those people, but like they are very proud of Texas A&M or CrossFit or being a vegan. It's like, that's, they got to let you know that. Oh. Cool. Do you have Orange Theory in Texas? Do I have what? Do you, do you, have you heard of Orange Theory? Is that a thing in Texas? I know it's like a worldwide Orange Theory thing. Fitness, like the yeah. hit hit the high intensity workouts. Yeah, we got we have one like right down the street from me. Yeah, that they're similar. They like I remember hanging out once like through <laughs> a second per like I end up hanging out with some Orange Theory people and it's religion to them. It's crazy. Well, like you go to uh, Pure Bar, more so for the girls. That's kind of the same thing here as well. But uh, I remember going with a friend who was like, yo, dude, I got these like, it was like the beginning of the year. Like, I got these coupons. We can go and get like two free workouts at Orange Theory or whatever it was, for, like $20. So I was like, hell yeah, dude. Like, let's just, let's go get fit, man. Like, I'm down to work out. Like, I don't like working out, but sometimes, you know, you just got to like run or whatever and not be a fat fuck. Like, I fat shame myself all the time. If I'm like, hey, hey, fat fuck. Let's go run. Let's go jog a little bit. Let's go play some footy with the boys out there on Saturday. Let's go, you know, let's not become just a, a, a blob of shit. But, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's very easy to do that. But I went to the Orange Theory and just was like, okay, man, like, I don't like, like – and, like, when you go to one of those the first time and you're just wiped – and like they're like, all right, man, come on! Like they're they're hyping you up and they're trying to help, but I was just like, just get the fuck out of my face, just get the fuck out of my face. Stop crying! Here. Stop yelling at me! I'm trying. You're being so mean. <laughs> I think I'm having a heart attack. I can't breathe. Are you like, just get out? Come on, man! You can hit that goal. I don't have a goal. My goal is to not be dead at the end of this class, man. And Should I, don't I know go I'm towards making. the white light? <laughs> Yeah, Orange Theory, dude. I'm, I'm like, I, I like the idea of working out. I don't like actually doing it. But then it's like, I don't like when people tell me to do it. Like, I was never a big coach guy. Like, if you were a coach, it was just like telling me what to do. I'm cool with that. But like, when you're starting to yell at me and like, I know that that's a motivational tactic. But like, it, it just made me be like, fuck you, dude. Like, I don't care. Like, now I'm gonna do the opposite of what you're trying to tell me to do. Oh, you, you want me to go to the weight section? Fuck you. I'm going back to the rower. Yeah, I'm going to do more cardio. I don't care. My heart may explode, but my blood is on your hands. <laughs> You're under my... Or I'm under your watch now, motherfucker. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, that was Mike and Alex Talk Fitness. If that didn't inspire you, because New Year's coming up, Maybe we could, we, maybe we inspired someone. Do you have any resolutions? No. Like, are you thinking of any? I don't ever really try to do it, but last year or this year, I guess, I was like, it's not so much a resolution. And the pandemic kind of fucked up the plan, but I was like, I want to be playlist guy. Like, do you ever, like, I always had those friends, like, every now and then, a few and far between, but like, you hop in their car and they just have fire playlists, and you're like, what is this, dude? This Can you is share a fucking this with me? solid. Right. And like, so I was like, I'm just going to slowly, like you have to have in your mind, like what, like, what is this good for? So like, I made like 12 different playlists all for separate, like, like car, high key hang. Like if you want, if you're getting like just fucked up with the boys, then like low key hang, like I'm just chilling, like me and the lady hanging. Like I have one just like with songs that are about her. So like, you know, I'm in the car with her. There's a little like turn on the romance a little bit, but like all year long, anytime I hear a song, I'm like, you know what that should go in the beach playlist that should go in the car playlist. So I have like, I've curated a playlist over the year where it's not really a resolution. It's just something that I focused on doing and it's kind of badass now in the car. I'm like, dude, I have like two hours of like a legit playlist that is just for the car. But are you, are you a proper playlist person in that all your playlists have really obscure, weird names like dog chew, mocha latte, 
And it's like, what? Oh, why no. is it? Why is the playlist named that? I don't. No, I got. Uh, let me read them. Let me let me pull these bad boys out here. Right, why are you doing that? This is the kind of resolutions I have. So they're like kind of. I, if I do set a res- New Year's resolution, it's kind of like, oh, try five new beers, so I can like by mid January crushed it. Nailed it. First five days of the year. Bring on twenty twenty two. And I am done. <laughs> Wake me up next year. Um, okay, so I got Alex's Dank Hits. That's some good stuff. I have no Avid idea what Bros. Dank means, but I'm excited. Dude, it's Dank, bro. Um, the Avit Brothers, that's my favorite band. So it's just like all of their songs, basically. I have Car, Christmas, Emma, Funk, Giants, which really is like six songs that are just New York or have the word Giants in them. <laughs> um gravy gravy gang heavier stuff high key hang jams and if you look it's just pictures of jam as the picture on that makes sense um i have low key oh. hang mums which is just mumford and sons you've gone, uh you've pool, gone crazy pause. you've gone you've gone bet the house background oh i have haven't I? that is weird i don't know what's going on hold on yeah, hey, we're out. We're yeah, out now. We're back in the back in the room. Okay. I don't know what happened. I guess I don't. I took the green screen down. But it must have still been looking over that. But I got positive vibes only. Past the grade playlist. Roughnecks from when I would go uh, as a part owner of the Houston Roughnecks XFL team. I, uh, you know, we would tailgate and get kind of fucked up. And it was mostly just DMX. X gonna give it to you playing. Uh, uh, I have running songs I heard and. <laughs> swimming and throwback that's pretty much it so those are just a ton of playlists that i've slowly built over one year that might be my favorite playlist name i've ever heard songs that i've heard well there was like and those are only the ones where i'm like what is this i've not like i have no idea who the band is but it's just gonna come up on the radio station and i'll just like download that and then i throw it into that so that it's just a smorgasbord of like sometimes you like listen to the same shit over and over again like i don't know if you're like that where like i find myself like Okay, cool. Well, I got back into Incubus again. Like, and it's like I love Incubus, but like I have the same like twenty songs that like I could put together. And you're like, all right, I've listened to these a lot. That twenty four K or twenty four K Golden uh, Mood this year, like that was like my jam, and I probably listened to that like a ton. So then like on all of these, like every time I throw stuff on, like that would be in it, and I was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. So now it's like only in two playlists as opposed to all of the playlists. Do you find and avoid putting the songs in all of the playlists or else you just have the same playlist essentially? Yeah. Do you ever find though now because I guess playlists are a good way to get out of that, but because now we have all the music ever available, that like if I go to maybe like Walk the Dog or something like that, oh, I'll listen to some music, I end up spending majority of the trip just deciding what next, I'm going to listen to. Next, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to pick. Absolutely. I, mine's like, I throw it on shuffle. Like when I can't figure it out. Cause I go to like, I'll go to iTunes. I have Apple music. So I'll go to iTunes. Then I'll go to like new music. See if there's anything there. I usually go to alternative or rap and then like, okay, what do we got new? Like what's trending? What are the top tracks? And sometimes I'll find something that I'm like, Oh cool. This guy's got something new. Like that's how I like machine gun Kelly. Like I hated machine gun Kelly, but then he came with that poppy, like, blink 182 type stuff with travis barker and i was like uh i dig it and i remember being like on the phone just walking the dog and it was like machine gun kelly tickets to my downfall I was like, oh he's got an album out fuck yeah and like that was all i listened to all weekend and i was like super into it and uh like that's just what i'll like i'll, I'll get obsessed with just like an, al- an album for like a month and like then i just move on glorious sons i was really i, I got to interview them for my job this this year and I, I liked them before, but um, then got like into some of their older stuff and was just like, I absolutely love this band. So like, I like going back into old stuff and like Jane's Addiction, I kind of got into a couple of years. Like I, I liked Jane's Addiction, but I never did the deep dive. I, like, I really I enjoy their songs. Dude, they're, they're a fun band, man. And like, I, uh, I was trying to get into meditating one year and like Jane's Addiction is a good like just background like trippy weird hmm. vibe so if you're trying to do like meditation or anything I mean I don't do it anymore I'm bad at it but that felt like it helped and just Jane's Addiction is like a cool band to like kind of get into so yeah that's just me rambling about music so that's New Year's resolution get back into meditation Dude, I'm telling you 
I'm telling you, dude, be a playlist guy. Like just start a couple of playlists. If you start at the beginning of the year, that's all you like. You don't have to like make a playlist for anything specifically. You're not like, shit, I got a Christmas party this weekend. I got to be able to put the playlist together. You're like, no, all year, just anytime you hear something, be like, huh, what is this? Like, that's how my mind works now. And I'm like, oh, what would this go with? I like this song. This would fit well in the car. This would fit well if I was just hanging with my lady, you know? And then the situation comes up and you're like, boom, I got the playlist for this. You're never panicked on like what I'm going to play next. So what are you saying? Like the best method is to rather than be sitting down and thinking, okay, I'm now going to create a playlist, almost like preset playlists for every mood. And then just as the songs come to you, you can then naturally just slot them into those moods. Right. And that was what I kind of used the like start of the year and this year with where I was like, I'm going to find new music throughout the year. Now my job is just to associate like, what is this going to go with? And not all of them make it to a playlist. Sometimes it's just something that's in my library, whatever. But it's just like, it is nice. You're like, I'm feeling like a little sad. I got, I got my taking back Sunday ready to go in case I want to just be all be a little emo boy for a little bit. You know, sometimes you gotta be a little emo boy every now and then it's nice. After that giant scan, I was a little emo kid for a little bit. It's a little sad. My chemical romance. <laughs> no, I can't do. I can't do. I'm not okay. My dad took me to the city. See a band. Last thing on playlist, though, I will admit I did do a similar playlist to what you've set up. I, I did a, a New Jersey Devils playlist, and it's just literally every song that I could find that had devil. Right the with the devil. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's move on, I guess. Shall we, shall we talk about sports in this sports podcast? I guess we should. should we? I guess. All right, let's, let's, let's rip the bandage off because... Can you hear the, uh, the people outside? Can you hear the, the noise outside? My, like, I don't know if my microphone's picking it up. Why is there like a There's, party? It's Taco Tuesday. I mean, I'm a huge Taco Tuesday guy. I'm not knocking that, but my apartments just got bought by new people and they're trying to do the community like, hey, let's all have a get together. It's like, hey man, it's a pandemic. And also it's like cold and it's raining right now. And I guess they got tables all set up and I can just hear, like, they have a DJ that I can hear talking. I didn't know if you could hear it through. I can't. What are, what are they okay, playing? So. What music are they playing? Ooh, Electric Avenue. Ooh, that's a good party song. We're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. Boom, 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 boom. And a bad, not a bad one. Eddie Grant, shout out Eddie Grant. I don't know what else he did, but Electric Avenue was a good one. Did he? Does he need to do anything after that? No, not really. Okay, so start off. So timeline. Woo, we're excited. Giants are playing again. It's Sunday. Football. Woo, Daniel Jones is back. Oh, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. And then... Probably going to fuck up Kyler. And then... Um, so, offense can't do anything. Daniel's not healthy. Uh-oh. What happened to our offensive line? Why is everybody getting sacked? Our cat's heads are falling off. See, this is what my... Pro- so I said... I can't remember who I was talking to at the beginning, before the game on Twitter... But they were like claiming that they have inside knowledge that Daniel Jones is starting. I think this is maybe on Saturday. And I was like, why? Why are we bringing him back? Surely, you know, we're rushing him. And he was like, no, trust me. He's like 100%. They wouldn't bring him back if he wasn't 100%. And I'm going out on the limb. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't 100%. It did not look like it now i think what they may have done is they just were like we're gonna just ask daniel if he's okay and when you ask an nfl player if they're okay they're gonna just tell you yeah i'm fine yeah because because he's no like even whenever that he was i'm gonna go i'm gonna try to throw the ball oh no no one to throw it with so i'm gonna do my traditional daniel jones i'm gonna fucking run it myself even then he kind Mm. of looks he looks scared almost to run the ball himself i mean he didn't he did even really have any runs he, i think he did a couple of times for a couple of yards but yeah he was like he was not daniel jones had less than seven yards rushing in the game so yeah, yeah not too many 
And like Daniel Jones is usually good for like as a betting man, if you can get the over under on Daniel Jones at like 35 and a half or 40 yards a game, like you take the over on it because he typically is good for a couple of runs that are 20 yards or so a game. And even like, th- and when Colt came in though, Colt still got sacked twice, like eight sacks. Like the, the offensive line that we were loving got kind of brought back down to reality and I don't think the Giants are a bad team. I think the Giants, and I think we've said this quite a few times since we've started this podcast, was like they're a team that's not it's they're not there yet. Like they're building. You're gonna have games like this with a young up and coming team. And I think they got a little confident. The Daniel Jones thing being rushed back, like I don't know, man. I don't I don't know what our offense is, but one thing that really pisses me off and it has all year is we always like it felt like we were in third and eight every down it felt like like i felt like we were on our own side of the field in about like a third and eight third and nine on a, every single play is pretty much what it felt like and the giants and i don't i i'm assuming this is jason garrett but like he fucking loves setting up third down plays that are like all right what we're gonna do is you're gonna run two yards short of the first down and we're gonna hit you right there and then you're just gonna hope that they don't tackle you it's like, yes, that sometimes works, and it's cool. Sterling Shepard had a couple of plays like that where you're like, ha, got the first down. Golden Tate had that one catch that would have been a first down, but it was two yards short of the marker. And I don't know if this is necessarily Daniel's job to lead your guy a little bit further or whatever, but you can only run the routes that are called. And yeah, it's like, so it, as, as, we, it's is, like, cool, now it's fourth and two on our own 40. Like, neat. But is, now is we still he, are just punting closer. Is he allowed to like, override – or is that kind of more down the line, I, I guess? Because there's a couple of... I remember... I can't remember exactly when it was, I think. But we was third, third and one. And rather than running the ball, he decided he was going to try to throw the ball. And then we fucked up. And then we was on fourth down. I just don't think that... Uh, Daniel or Garrett? Well, I, I don't know who called it. I'm assuming Garrett called that oh, play. But well, it was, well, I just I just felt like Daniel wasn't comfortable running, and you could see like there were a couple times where like I mean the Andrew Thomas got just wrecked, he got absolutely wrecked, and there were a couple times like Daniel does, Daniel's really been good at stepping up in the pocket, kind of you know like when he can sense the rush, he he can kind of avoid it, get out if, of it, if, yeah. if he possibly can, and he did that a couple times, and it was like where traditionally you'd see Daniel Jones take that off and like run up the middle of his a wide open pocket. Like the, like he could just take off, get the five, six yards. And he didn't do that. No, he and the only reason I'm thinking he didn't his... do that is he's worried about tweaking the hammy again, or like, he's just not able to do it. And it did look like he was limping at a port uh, at, a, at a part in time of the, of the game. And then Colt McCoy came in there at the end. And it was just, it was bad. And Buda Baker, uh, a stud for Arizona. Like it was I, the whole game. I was like, where the fuck is he? Like, then I realized they had him in coverage on Evan Ingram and Evan Ingram, I think had one catch all day. So like, which I mean, more inconsistency with Evan Ingram, but Evan Ingram to make one catch. I mean, it's, it's not bad for him. Normally he likes to let it through his hands and hit him in the face. Oh yeah. I mean, he didn't swat it to the other team. Like he likes to do. So, you know, Every cloud have a silver lining, but I, Rose does have a good one. Yeah, it just that's it not just, even the right way to say. It. I think, I think you're right in that. I think there was an override and positivity around the team, especially probably within the players. So I, I think we unnecessarily and in my brain and my my brain as well. Yeah, and still I think there, we though. unnecessarily risked that by because I think if we'd have gone into this game. Yes, it was it was a winnable game going into it because they were on a bad streak. But I think if we just kept with McCoy from the get go, played him the whole game, then worst case we lost. But then it'd be we'd still have that that card in the back pocket like, hey, but don't worry, next week Daniel Jones is going to be back. Hey, everyone's happy again, sort of thing. Whereas now it's kind of like, uh, do we play him Daniel Jones next week? Because is he going to be ready? I kind of looked at it as looking at our schedule, Cardinals, Cowboys are the two winnable games. If you're just looking at it from the four games we had left, if you're like, we have to win two of these final four games, 
I think you wanted to have Daniel in there because I think you were more confident that Daniel could go out and beat the Cardinals than Daniel could go out and beat the Browns. But then again, you're having to weigh in. Is he healthy enough to do that? I, I, I feel like we're going to see him again on Sunday. I don't know why. Right now, as you record this on Tuesday, I feel like he's going to be out there again on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I have no doubt about it. I'm sure even if he's only like 70%, I'm sure they're going to put him out there now. But now he'll be fine, okay? He's going to heal up, right? But the reason I think they're going to definitely risk him, because normally I think after that performance and how he looked, I think maybe now they might have been a bit, okay, let's, let's rest him for the last two games of the season. But I think, I mean, not, we're not going to talk about any other teams. However, did you watch the Ravens-Browns game last night? Yeah. Yeah, I did. That opened my eyes a little bit in that, if if our defense turns up, their defense is a little bit shook right now. So that could be a very interesting game on Sunday. And just just hear me out on this too. You know somebody that's been awfully quiet the last month or so is despite the Giants' success that they had had, four and one in the last five. Where's Darius Slayton been? What's up with Darius? Huh? Maybe. Darius Slayton has his, his breakout game. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't have a great feeling going into this game with the health of Daniel Jones and the Browns. But, like, also, maybe the Browns, like, on a shorter week, maybe they gave it all they had against the Ravens, and that wasn't enough. And, like, you know, and we scored, like, 70 just... points against them. What if we did that? We go Arizona State on their ass. Did you see that game? It was 70 to 7. That was fucking Oh, I did not see that. Yeah, Herm Edwards coached Arizona State. Antonio Pierce is the uh, linebackers coach or defensive coordinator for them. Fun fact. Former Giant. That is a fun fact. I wonder if he's on camera. Have you uh, – side topic. I was trying to find some maybe like Giants players that um, that could um, they're on cameo. So maybe I could like – throw him a couple of bucks and just, like, get them to record like a generic intro. I had Wayne Gorman on Past the Gravy with that. Well, I was going to say, I saw Wayne Gorman was on Cameo and I was like looking at his um, the examples or the stuff that he's already done. I don't know whether he was tired that day, but he just seems like the most uninterested and boring man there is. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> we didn't use it. We didn't use it. Uh, hey, I'm and he didn't say the right name. He's like, and, uh, this is the a... Gravy Podcast. And I was like, it's the past, it's past the gravy. Fuck. All right, man. Thanks. <laughs> but it was like $20 then. He's probably more now. I don't think, oh, he's, I think he is more than $20, but it's not that much. Because I was like, ooh. He was when he was the backup. And then I think we, who did we have last year also? We had, uh, for the Patriots last year, we had the backup and he was also um pretty good too um but uh, yeah he was a third string last year so it was like whatever fuck it i'll try it because i was the other one i was going to try to get i can't remember um, you might be able to i'm going to quickly look it up seamlessly make it look like i'm actually not Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. looking it up so i'm actually maybe just thinking about it but the uh, guy yeah david koch kochner kochner the guy that played champ kind you know david kechner yeah, he's like 200 bucks. I was like, that would be a great, like him in character as Chem Kine introducing the podcast. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, so on Past the Gravy, we do like awards at the end of the year. And last year, I get, we had like a sponsor budget. And it was like $200 from our uh, sponsors that we used to, uh, like there's seven categories and we had guest presenters for five of them. And they were just like, we had a two hundred dollar budget. We gave ourselves on cameo to go like find whoever the fuck we could and be like, "Hey, read this." And it was literally just like typed up like for them to say. It. But we had uh, the senator from the office, Robert Lipton, that hmm. like was gay, married Angela. Uh, we had him do it. We had uh, Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. He did it. Uh, we had Cato Kalen. That's my personal favorite. He's done a couple for past the gravy. He's a big fan. And we had a couple of big brother guys do it. And then, no, we had Rachel Dolezal present the woman of the year award. No idea who that is. 
You know, Rachel Dolezal is? She was the white lady that tried to say that you could identify as a different race. Oh. And she was like in the head of like, she was like one of the heads of some like um, colored people's, like it, it wasn't the NAACP, but it was like the advancement for colored people or something like that. I feel terrible. Like saying colored people makes me feel uncomfortable, even though that is the actual name. But like she was claiming to be African-American when in fact she was not African-American. And then she it came out that, oh, hey, you're a white lady. What are you doing? But I was like, well, obviously we're going to grab her if she's on Cameo. Just talking about being uncomfortable saying that. So I'm going to prefix this so I don't get in trouble five years from now when someone brings this up. This is a Daniel Tosh joke. Daniel Tosh said this, not me. But what he was not saying about... Mike. Not Mike. Daniel Tosh. But he was saying about how he, he doesn't agree that you, can, you should use the word colours when describing people. He's like, even when I'm doing my laundry, I don't use the word colours. I have a pile of whites and a pile of darkies. <laughs> uh, it makes me cringe now this year. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but it's like, it's the timing. and how Daniel Tosh somehow, I don't know how the fuck he gets away with some of the shit he comes out with. There's but, people that can, and then there's people that just like, you haven't gotten to that status, you know? Bill Burr can do whatever the fuck he wants, and they can't cancel Bill Burr because Bill Burr doesn't give a shit. Bill Burr is great. They try and cancel Joe Rogan every couple, like once a year, it feels like. Like, did you hear what Joe Rogan said? And it's like, yeah, Joe Rogan also owns everything he does. So he's not going to fire himself. I don't know if we've, have we spoke about Joe Rogan on this podcast before? For some reason, I feel we have. I don't believe so. Well, but the only reason I love Joe Rogan is because I don't think he, I think he genuinely keeps his cards very close to his chest in that how he really feels about a certain subject because you could just tell on his podcast he's like okay if if i'm interviewing someone who is an an, an anti-masker then i am pro masks but if i'm talking to someone who's pro vaccines all of a sudden joe rogan's anti-vaccine like you know he's like he's just i just want to poke your buttons and see how you react to it that's how he's he's like a bro or howard stern like, I think Howard Stern is one of the, maybe the greatest interviewer ever, but like Joe Rogan is right there too, where just like he, like everybody, like Alex Jones feels as comfortable as like fucking Barack Obama would, you know, and like two opposite ends of the spectrum. But like he is, he's curious. He's genuinely, he comes across as curious. So like when he has Elon Musk on and stuff like Elon Musk could have been like a douche to him and be like, dude, fuck you. And he's like, no man. Like, do you think robots are going to like take over people at one point? And it's like, he can have those like high conversations with people just because they trust him and he's a likable guy. And like, he doesn't, get mad at you for the things you say and there's he's like, not agenda, trying to like man. judge you while you're asking yeah i like that we're also talking about another podcast while we're like people are like maybe i should go listen to this rogan guy don't well, wait no. wait until don't. the end listen to us he's got enough listeners he doesn't need the extra money yeah that's true that is so true. you know as oh hold on oh I... sorry that is a great ringtone <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the party. Um, I thought they got like, turn okay. it up. They, they yeah, they just turned it up right into my pants pocket. I guess there's a but, party. Uh, no, there's, there's a party a, in your pants. A, it's a pants. <laughs> it is a, a pants, pants party. party. <laughs> um, so in summary, but the Giants, Giants did not play well. Not great. We got the bad game out of the way. Now we'll just fuck up the Browns and the Ravens, right? That's easy. So. Maybe. I mean, we're not going to talk about predictions because obviously, again, we, we, we was not accurate. Let's just say that with our predictions of uh, the last game. We, weren't, we were not. We were not. We might have been slightly wrong. But uh, this game coming up against the Browns. So again, I would, if I had to predict it last week, I would have probably gone again a similar, very close game, maybe a low-scoring game. But after watching... The Giants, and then also watching the Browns. This could be a. I think it's good. It's going to go either way. It's going to be a very close, low, low, low scoring game, or it's going to be another blowout where it's going to be like both teams score like 30 points or some shit. 
What do you think? I would say it would probably be more likely to be lower. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna, sorry, that's the dog. But, uh, we're going to have to stop Chubb and uh, Kareem Hunt. And if we don't do that, we're in for a long day. I think you got to make Baker beat you. We can stop the run. We got Blake Martinez. It's just going to come down to what the offense can do, really. Like, we're going to live and die with that offense. And I think uh, I think it'll be more of a low-scoring game, at least for the Giants. Like, I don't see the Giants putting up 30 points. I would love that. doesn't feel like we have the, the ability to put up 30 points at this point, unless our running game can just start to go off, which would be awesome. But uh, until until that starts to happen, and I hope I'm wrong, and we just light them up and Gallman goes for 100 yards again and – like, that would make me happy because then you can open up all the pass. I think Darius Slayton can go off, you know. Uh, that would that would really turn things around. I think I think the key is how healthy Daniels is, Daniel Jones is. I think that could turn the key. But I, and if he starts it all. So, and is this – I'm trying to think. Is, are we – not that it really matters that much, but are we – is it at New York or is it – it is it's, it's at it's, – we're at home game, right? I believe so. So okay, let's let's lock it in. So Browns Giants. What are you going with? I'm gonna go twenty four twenty giant. Or twenty four twenty Browns. I think the Giants make it closer than the game really is. So you you you're picking the Browns. 24-20, I think the Giants score a couple points at the end to kind of keep it close. Oh, you think it's going to be one of those annoying games where we're like trash for the first three quarters and then suddenly we string together a we couple We throw like a garbage to time touchdown. It's like 13 to 24 and then we throw a touchdown and it's like, cool, now it doesn't look as bad on the score. We fuck over like whatever, whoever bet the Browns and gave points. Like, well, the Giants will cover, but like, won't matter. I'm going to go optimistic and I'm going to go 30 points to the Giants, 27 Browns, 30, 27. It's going to be a big game. That would be one hell of a game. And that's what's going to happen. That'd be one hell of a game. If the Giants can score 30 points, I will be a very happy fella come, come Tuesday. Cause I don't think we'd lose. I don't think that defense gives up a bunch. It's going to happen. Bojack Horseman. All right. Agrees. I love Bo- Bojack. All right. Um, all right. Let, are we going to talk about our other team then? Yes. Let's wrap it up with some positive talk because West Ham won 2 1 against Leeds. It was an awkward first five minutes, shall we say. Um, how did you okay. feel? Go-, Ex- go. No, you go. You go. You I was, was going to say, how was you feel? Like, did you feel like, oh, God. This is it. Five minutes in, we're already one nil down. Fuck. Or was you like, don't, don't, don't worry, we're gonna bring, we're gonna come back. I felt like we were gonna lose at that point, just because it felt like I don't understand. And again, this is like my third year, full year being a West Ham fan. I do not understand the like. Okay, Fabianski, you give him the penalty in the beginning. Whatever, fuck it. Like, I don't like kind of stupid. I thought it was kind of stupid, but like it's by the letter of the law, yes, it's a penalty. Yeah, Fabianski fucking stopped it. He stopped it, and then it's like, off his line. And then when you watch Leeds, they had their fucking dude in the box when he kicks the ball, and it was like he's off the line. Why do we not have another re-kick? Like, there should have been two re-kicks. There was one re-kick, and it was the one that we stopped. So I was a little bit upset. I don't understand the like. Do you want me to, to shatter your is... dreams by explaining why? Do you go ahead? You can okay. Shatter. You can so shatter. with the the Leeds situation or the, the the Leeds player coming in, so that is only classes encroachment. So let's just say Fabianski saves the penalty and it rebounds out, and then that player that was in the box illegally scores the rebound, then. The goal is disallowed, goal kick. But because they scored the penalty, he can basically go wherever the fuck he wants, essentially. Okay. All right. Well, that makes more sense. And I also just don't understand how a keeper is not supposed to move at all 
He has to and keep just one to... leg on the, the line. But like you're not supposed to move at all, and you're supposed to just perfectly guess and then be able to jump all the way across the opposite side of the net. It's like there's like you're against it anyways. Let him fucking move. Who cares? Well, I will say you get a better ball. Good. Like you have a fucking huge ass fucking net. You're a professional. If you don't fucking put I'll, it in the net. I will say if you if you allow them to move off the line, then you risk having people just like yeah running at the guy. So there needs to be Oh well. well to an extent, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I thought that was kind of a ticky tack thing, but I, I, again, I'm new to the whole thing. And then we fucked them over anyway, so fuck them. But fuck I will say Leeds. before we move I off, I hate Leeds now. <laughs> I've added them to the teams that I fucking hate, and it's Leeds. I will say that before we move off the panel, I will say with VAR, there needs to be some kind of like lead in that when they look back at the penalty, he was like, I th- I'm pretty sure he was off his line, but if anything, it was maybe like half an inch off his line. Like, Come on, let's. Did that well, really the stop the, the guy from were scoring? Saying, they were saying, well, like that's pretty typical of most of these situations. If you look at every penalty kick that's happened, I would guarantee you that most of them are like that, where it's just a split, like it's like a fraction that he was off the line. Like I understand if he's ten feet off the line. I understand yeah. if he came out with both feet, but like, yeah, I think te- it needs to be technically, because that that half an inch that Fabianski was off the line. I'm pretty sure that didn't that, stop, that didn't make him save it. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of annoying. But uh, then but we went. Ball on. don't lie. The soccer gods fucking this karma. And then we kind of bossed it. I think. I mean, if this was a, it does seem about three weeks ago that this game happened. But if, from what I remember, I think we pretty bossed it from then on. I was never ever once we got our goal from old Tommy Suchek. Uh, I, love I, check, man. I, I never felt like oh oh they're gonna come back i just we just kind of had it under control alaire um again not good not oh, good i don't know i think I'll, i texted you that you did but don't not get me wrong he should have scored he should have scored at least one goal which but, is let me count how many times i've said uh 300 times this year he should have scored i believe if yeah. my calculations are correct but that he's just he hesitates he hesitates and he who hesitates he showed masturbates. some because that's, that, that's what i always was told at the bar but i will give like david moyes did say it very well in that the best player on the field was the Leeds goalkeeper like if that if it was a different goalkeeper i think alaya would have scored at least two on that day like that overhead kick that was sick yeah, score it. And then we'll talk about how sick it was. That's the kind of goal that I want to talk about on Tuesdays. I don't know. I don't know why I'm defending him so much. But I, I, maybe it's just because. Oh, uh, you, I. Without we, Antonio, we, we tend we've to do that. We else. pick players we love. Yeah, we pick players we love, and then you just defend. The, like Daniel Jones is my guy now. Like I was that way with Eli. I was like, I will die arguing on this hill. Like I do not care. And like, well, he's not good. Like, you shut your mouth about our king. We don't talk about Daniel like that. You I can talk about Daniel. Like that. You can't. <laughs> you shut your mouth when you're talking to me. But um, yeah, I I just I I'm not a big not a big Alaire fan. I mean, I hope he does well. Hope he does well. But um, Declan Rice looked like, really good. I think Again. moving forward, I could just like copy and paste that every week. You just like, I hope he does well, but I just don't like him. <laughs> Like, he makes me mad. I want to buy in every single time. Like, maybe this is the game. Maybe. Oh, no. No, but again, fuck him. Um, One, talking yeah. about the, I always, like, back in the day, like, about three, four years ago, I compared him to, to Eli Manning in that he was a long-standing captain of the team that a lot of people were wishing Whoa. that would retire and things like that. The, the, so, the Eli Manning of West Ham United, Mark Noble. So he comes oh, on okay. at the end of I the game. I thought you were still saying Alaire was. Oh. I was like, Alaire is <laughs> not, Eli. You get that out of your mouth. No, he, as much as I... L- I wouldn't say I love Alaire, but yeah, as much as I'm behind him, oh yeah, he's not definitely not the Eli Manning. Uh, but Mark Noble, when he came on for the last, what, five, ten minutes, dude, he looked... It's, it looks sad. Like, he was so it's slow. It's brutal, man. Like, I felt bad for him. <laughs> it's like on FIFA when you have like... Your guy gets hurt in the game's trying to tell you, like, hey, sub him out. Sub him out. But you're like, I used all my subs, man. I don't know. I don't so know what like, to do here. He just and like, limps just around. Like, your guy just, like, limps, 
but like then he just gets to beat off the ball every time anybody has it. And it was like, that's a hundred percent what Mark Noble is like. And I love Mark Noble cause he's awesome. And everything you've seen with Mark Noble, he's like the sweetest, coolest guy. He's stuck with a club that everybody wants to leave. It feels like, and like, yeah, like that does make, there's a solid comparison to Eli Manning in that, but it was just like, dude, just like, don't put him out there right now. We need, like, we're only up one. I understand if it was a two goal lead, throw him out there, let him play, let him have some fun. It's, scary when he's out there it's scary it, it, it's far you can see they kind of have people it's like a bubble as opposed to like he's not just manning up with somebody they have somebody else there that kind of like back him up as well it comes on with his and he's got to get those caps i think he's got to be going for an all-time cap number right bet, is he not or i'm pretty sure isn't he not already the all-time Oh, I don't know. Is there some record, like Premier League record or something he could be trying to set? I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. Most West Ham appearances. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's... I don't know, like, the history of West Ham enough. I, yeah, I hope he's not going for the... <laughs> because, so, the person... So, now, right now, Mark Noble has 446 appearances for West Ham United, which is pretty impressive. But for him to reach the most, he would have to play about another 220 games for West Ham. Yeah, that's not going to happen then. Never mind. I hope not. Who's at the least. most? Is it Bobby Moore? <laughs> Billy Bonds. Okay. I was like, I know two ex West Ham guys, really, that were from, like, and that's just because they have stands named after them or statues, basically. Trevor Brooking. Trevor Brooking, that's another stand, right? Yes. 528. Oh, no, total, sorry, total appearance, 643. Mr. Trevor Brooking. And is that Mark, what a cap is? Is a cap a start or is a cap an appearance? Cap is, uh, I think it's just an appearance. Okay. I think. I'm pretty sure. Because I think I, they got that because I think back in the day when you made your first cap, like first appearance, they would give you like a memorial cap to wear. Uh, your okay. number on. But two yeah. one, I mean, the defense came through when they had to be. Uh, Fabianski, he's my favorite on the team. Again, I've said that a bunch of times, but like Ogbonna, Ogbonna again, solid as a rock. Yeah, uh, just. Fabianski, though, like, we would be such a worse team without him. And mm. like you were saying on the other end with Leeds, they fucking were able to come through. I don't know if you watched the Wolves game today. Wolves' keeper really bailed them out. Um, but Fabianski just does things that, like, last year wasn't able to be done because we had fucking – what's his face? Roberto. In, in goal. Fuck Roberto, man. I don't even want to yeah. say that name. I was like, just throw David Martin out there and let him die in that. I don't care. <laughs> Literally just just play with 12 men or just just put, just pull somebody else out and we'll just run around without a keeper. Because it, can be, it can't be worse. He still technically plays for us. He's on loan? Yeah. Roberto? I thought we sold him. I'm pretty sure he's still on the books. That Martin win was like, I, that's a very, no, oh, that, that was, was just a cool moment that he won and he got to go Chelsea. see his dad and all that. Yeah. yeah and he shut him out too. I bought a bottle of Remy Martin. I went to the liquor store on my way home and bought a bottle of Remy Martin. It was like, fuck it. Remy Martin for David Martin. Let's go. What's and then I realized that? how expensive Remy Martin is. So I hope he never plays again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would. That would be the worst. So it's just like, I mean, every time Fabianski does like a goal kick, I'm like, please don't pull your hamstring. Like, <laughs> please be okay. Because it, it was hamstring or quad or something like that. Like, just be easy on the kicks, buddy. I'm pretty sure it was just ham. But, last um, year. We were five on the table when the game wrapped up. I saw after the Chelsea game today, we are sixth on the table right now. We got Crystal Palace. Tomorrow, as we're recording this, then we got Chelsea on the 21st, which I believe is Monday. Um, Holy Crystal shit. Pat, like two one games thing, to preview or at least predict. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, one thing that I really feel good about 
with West Ham is like we've been talking about before how they are winning the games they're supposed to win on their schedule. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I understand the Chelsea's, the Man United's, the Liverpool's, the Man City's. You don't expect to win all of those games just from where we are, the talent we've got. But I would even like to so, be in those games. I'd like to have a shot and well, we've been competitive. We've we've won. We beat Leicester. You know, we beat Wolves, who I don't necessarily know if they're up there, but they've kind of been up there as of like, like the last couple of years. Wolves has been a powerhouse, sort of. Yeah. And and they um then they beat Chelsea today. They did beat Chelsea. It was stupid. If you bet Chelsea, don't do that. I'm not, never doing that again. But um uh we're beating the teams are supposed to be like Newcastle. We'll throw that out. Cause we kind of turned a new leaf after that, but, uh, and how the season has gone. Those, we should have beat Arsenal because now they're a relegation mm-hmm. team. They're not going to get relegated. They're no. let Arsenal get relegated. But, um, I think that we can, we can beat palace. We should beat palace. That seems like, I feel really good about the palace game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like, the thing West Ham used to do last year is they would just they they got they played down to that competition and they've done that a couple of times this year, um, but against Leeds it was like there was a point where you saw them turn it on and I was like, I think we're gonna get a second goal. Like I felt like the first six yeah. minutes, I was like we're probably gonna lose this game. Fuck, this is gonna suck. And then we were able to beat the Bielsa ball or whatever it was. They were trying to spread us out. Then we. Put a uh, who did we sub in? Uh, uh, Benny Hanna, fucking love him. He's been a he G great. for us. And the just the pace that we've been able to keep up with the like it not having injuries, knock on wood. Um, I I feel like we're in a really good spot. I think Palace, they're like relegation battle, right? No, I think they're they're not that far below us. They're good. They're, oh, oh they're, they're they're in twelfth right now. So. Oh, it's bottom half of the team. We're a top half team, dude. What are you talking about? If we look down on them. Wait, why are yeah, we, we oh, don't do that? We're now seventh because Man City got a point. Oh, you're right. You're right. That was before the... Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I looked at it after the Chelsea game. But um, Yeah, City fucking tied West Brom. But how could it say... Like, not to get too off track, but 12 games into the season, we're, we're only below Man City... By one goal difference. That's the only thing separating us and Man City after twelve games. I would have, uh, I would have said, I'll take that if you if you had given me that option at the beginning of the season. But I think Palace feels like a two-one win if we're giving out predictions. Yeah. Chelsea, it's going to be a one-one draw. I think because Chelsea, I don't know what they've been up to. They like they had that like, oh hey, did you know they haven't lost in seventeen performances no it doesn't matter which contests they were and i was like i didn't know that and then they lost in was it champions of europa then they just lost today i don't think they'll lose but i think they'll get right and then i feel like we'll we'll draw against them i'm feeling optimistic and we own chelsea as of late i don't know if you knew that you know did the double last year i think well let's just this it'd be cool to double them again this year do the old quadruples, what we call it. The droop. It's droop on Chelsea. That's what the kids are saying. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, West Ham streets. I have to go, yeah. West Ham are going to, they have to beat Palace. But I think, yeah, Palace are definitely going to score. But so just to be different, I'm going to go 3 2 West Ham. Oh, that's a lot, of, a lot of scoring. Yeah. And then West Ham, Chelsea. I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go one nil West Ham. I think we're gonna shut them out. Okay, dude, I like that. I like that. I love we, the confidence we that we before. have in this team this year. We did it before. We're gonna do it again. Do it again, year. motherfuckers. Do it again. I like that. Feel really good about West Ham. I feel very good. I'm a little excited. nervous about like. Again, I'm kind of hoping we finish seventh. Just because we don't have to like double up and play Europa or anything like that next year. We'll play in whatever the new tournament is, but it makes me nervous about the depth of our team playing in Europe tournaments. So. Yeah, we, yeah, if we Although are going to get into Europa League, we need then to we'll keep Rice players. probably, right? Oh, I imagine. So. Yeah. yeah. And actually, that might be good. So, you know what? Fuck it. I take that back. I take that back. We're, I, hope, we, I hope we make Champions League, dude. 
That would be probably won't make it to the, out of the group stage, but like, it'd be uh, fun. Okay. Like, uh, we, we could lose all six games in the group stage. It would just be nice to say, hey, we were in the Champions League. Well, hey, I got my Champions League West Ham game. Did you? I don't know if you know, we're in the Champions League. It's your Champions Go. Do, do you have CBS All Access? Because that's the only way you're going to be able to watch my West Ham because we're in Champions League. Or Spanish. They'll have like a couple of games on in Spanish. I guess you probably don't have as much Spanish programming as we do here. No. But I, I'll be like, oh, dude, tight. I thought this wasn't on TV. And it'll be like the mm, glad back against Man United or whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's in. On Universal Spanish. or something. Yeah. But honestly, watching Europa League games, like I don't know half the players anyway. So I you know. I think, I think if you don't, if you have no idea who the players are or the team, even the teams are, I think watching. Just mute it. Watching watch it in it Spanish is way more exciting because you get that. You get the goal. Goal! La 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 la. Chicharito. He's not that much. Shout out Columbus Crew, by the way. Who? Why? The one the MLS Cup, dude. Oh, you not pay to them? No. <laughs> I'm I'm aware that the Red Bulls aren't that good. I guess they're my team, but uh, yeah, I don't watch. Dude, hop on the Dynamo. No. I'm 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 born and raised on the, fuck, the merit of you support your local team, New York Red Bulls. What if I play for the Houston Dynamo? I, you know, I'm they're looking for a keeper. If we're saying I may be on a not a short list, but a list nonetheless. Maybe it's a list that's not allowed near the stadium, but it could be a list regardless. <laughs> Must stay five hundred feet list, away from the okay? stadium. It's not. It's not a restraining order <laughs> that I know of. All right. But if I look, you if have, they want a guy that's going to get scored on, I can be the keeper. I'm that guy. You I'm have up zero word. MLS goals. If, yeah. when you are on when, thank you. the Houston thank you. Dynamo's team, I will switch my Houston allegiance. Houston Dynamo FC, excuse Houston you. Houston Dynamo the name. FC, you have my allegiance. But until then... I don't know. Um, they just changed their logo. James Harden bought part of the team. Like they're kind of cool. How do you say? Like, do y'all have? Normally, you say like, "Oh, I'm I'm Red Bull till I die," but I don't really. I'm not that serious. I would say like, "I'm I'm Red Bull till I'm sick." Is that the same? You you get wings. Yeah. I don't know. Gi- or the Dynamo are forever orange is what they say. Just kind of. That's kind of cool. That's, so lovely i don't know if you guys have like they have this association so it's like the dynamo and the houston dash the nwsl team mm-hmm. uh, rachel daly she's a west ham women's player plays for the dash but um so they have like they try and do a bunch of stuff together does the red bulls have like a, a women's team that they like pair up with or whatever like they don't play together or anything like that but they, they just hype each other up or do you just not I care no you don't pay attention no, I haven't watched an MLS game in quite some time. I think it the is, last uh, game I watched. I had it was... on on Saturday, and it was kind of disappointing. Like this is the best. <laughs> the last MLS game I watched was during like their bubble at Disneyland or whatever it was, just simply because uh, it was the only football was I could watch at eight AM in the morning. Nothing and then it got that. And then there was like a thunderstorm or something, electrical storm, and they had to run away. It was hilarious. <sighs> Good times. All right. So, you're going 2-1 Palace, 1-1 against Chelsea. I'm going 3-2 Palace, 1-0 against Chelsea. If we're wrong, we'll never speak of these again, which is tradition. Exactly. But until then, we must dash. See the two I did there? Get it. We must, we like must dash. I, got, I like it. Smart. Smart Follow us. Thinking. On all of our socials at CBB Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Follow my man here, which is Alex J Middleton at Alex J Middleton Twitter and Instagram. Nailed it. Well done. Well done. Have you got just in case anyone's listening to this who is in the Houston area and bored on Saturday? Is there any availability left for the Pastor Gravy Christmas Spectacular? Yes. 
Yes, past the gravy's seventh annual Christmas spectacular going down at Southern Star Brewing Company. It's going to be a little chilly, but hopefully the weather's nice. I think it's planning on being a nice day. We got outdoor stage that we're going to be setting up. If the weather is bad, we have an indoor stage that we will be socially distanced at. Um, you know, the mask will be worn inside. It, it'll, it'll be safe, I promise. Uh, we've we've talked to Southern Star and done a bunch of stuff to ensure that. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. We This is one of my favorite things we do every year. Uh, this will be the fifth one we've done, like, a live broadcast for. We do a Christmas movie bracket uh we give out awards we have our gravies awards we have all kinds of awesome people are going to be there selling stuff doing other stuff with us i think we have axe throwing it's going to be cool Ooh. uh yeah dude it's gonna be awesome the best beer in the world so i'm gonna start brewing company 3525 north fraser street up in conroe uh if you're if you're in the area come on by it'll be a lot of fun and uh we're gonna go on the podcast will about 1 30 we have the band high dive starting things off at 12 30 after we go off the air uh when we wrap up we're gonna have winston cook performing then we're gonna have dizzy moore who's ian d'artez from hold on hollywood and then the headliner it's fucking santa claus guys santa claus is coming to town he's coming to the spooktacular why would you not want to come hang out at the best party of the year it's gonna be a great time there haven't and been then, a lot, so go on back and in 2021 the eighth annual that's where I'm going to be. I'll be there. That's the one. That's the one. Beautiful. And then we fade out. Da, 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 da. But until next week, enjoy winning because that's what we do, apparently. Win, win, win. Bye now. <laughs>